guess who's back? Back again. Um, yeah, so I'm back. Welcome back uh, to Shave of the Books. And thank you for tuning in. And y'all know what it is. Happy Black History Month. Yes. Um, I'm here for it. And I'm tired of learning about just about Dr. King and Rose Parks. There's so many other people to learn about. Um, so research is nice. I'm just saying. Um, so today we are going to talk about James Weldon Johnson, the essential writings of James Weldon Johnson. Um, the reason why, if you were to ask me, hey, Shay, what is one of the pieces of writings that stuck with you the most, right? I would say the autobiography of an ex-colored man by James Weldon Johnson. It's um, one of the pieces of work that I've read in college that really stuck with me. And being that I was an English major in college, I did not read that much about black people. Um, don't know why. I feel like that should probably change. Not only did I not read that much about black people, but I did not read that much about people of color. Um, so it was a lot of Frank O'Hara, John Ashbery, uh, Franz Kaffa, and how he metamorphosized. And, you know, I'm kind of tired of it. <laughs> no shade to any of them. They're great, they're great but um, I just think that there's so many other great authors out there that, uh, of people of color. And um, if they're writing about race, so be it. It's a conversation that we need to have. Uh, race is so prevalent in the United States and the fact that we don't talk about it is kind of weird. Um, so that's my take on it. Um, I feel like it being in my adulthood, I'm just now learning about like really dope figures like Toni Morrison and Octavia Butler, um, Zora Neale Hurston. Uh, I've known so much about Langston Hughes and Gwendolyn Brooks before, but there's just so many different types of writers. Carter G. Woodson, he's the reason that we even have Black History Month, and him alongside with Zora Neale Hurston um, were talking to like the last slaves that uh, were in the United States, and they documented their, you know, their like, <laughs> them coming on over here, um, what life was like beforehand, what their African name was, and how they were able to transition into America and so forth. Um, we've been writing down our history, people. Our history is just segregated um, when black history is American history. And um, while I'm down for Black History Month to celebrate black history, black historians, uh, black lit figures, um, and even not just, not only black historical figures, but people that are making a difference today. Um, I'm here for it. Um, give us a month, sure. But make no mistake, we should be celebrating black literary figures, black authors, black poets, black writers, black artists every month. That's just my opinion. So rant over. Back to James Weldon Johnson. So, who is James Weldon Johnson? James Weldon Johnson, don't know why I clapped there. James Weldon Johnson was a lawyer, the first black lawyer in Florida, actually. Um, he was an activist, a civil rights activist, and um, he worked for the NAACP in 1917. Um, he was also a novelist, a poet. Um, a man was a Renaissance man. I mean, Quite honestly um, so most people may know him for the song lift every voice and sing if you have not seen Beyonce's homecoming performance from Coachella I'm just saying if you need a in-home concert experience she sings lift every voice and sing which is also known as the Negro national anthem um, pretty dope song and he wrote that as a poem alongside uh, his brother so what I want to talk about in particular is James Weldon Johnson's The Autobiography of an Ex-Colored Man. And uh, this is going to be riddled with spoilers because I don't know if y'all reading anything, but maybe you just want to be edumacated about it. I'm kidding. But 
<laughs> so back to the autobiography of an ex-colored man and why is it so important to me. Um, so it starts off with basically the main character being a slave baby. And what I mean by that is like his mom got jiggy with the slave owner. And when she had her son, he came out light skinned like me. And um, with that, uh, his father didn't want anything to do with him. He was raised by his mother, identified as black all throughout his life, um, went ahead and married a black woman and also had um, a child with her and he struggled. He struggled economically in terms of uh, working and because he identified as black. And then not sure what the pivotal mo moment was, can't necessarily remember that. So reason why you should read the book it's really slender too it's like a hundred or so pages like this is the essential writings of james Weldon johnson um and so it's about a hundred pages or so um so pivotal moment where he just is not happy with his status in life so then he um uh, starts working and he starts what we call code switching so that would be an example of code switching would be like me straightening my hair for an interview um, when, you know, so that way it could look more professional, appropriate, when this is the hair that comes out of my head. Um, yeah, so let's say he starts going by Robert and then he may talk, may change the tone of his voice and talk a little bit more proper. Um, and then uh, he's wearing, you know, suits and nice things and he just starts passing and identifying himself as white. One piece that I remember that stuck out to me the most, maybe because of just my man, I'd knock him upside his head, um, is he was with uh, his friends, like for co-workers, white co-workers, and they were at a club where his wife was the custodian at. and. Um, she saw him there and he did not even acknowledge her and I believe at this point they weren't she didn't know where he was and where he had been so um, he didn't acknowledge her uh, as a custodian as the you know cleaning up lady and that sort of thing he just kept on pushing I would have yanked him just saying but I think that was just like a pivotal moment for me because it was just like, wow, like he really, he's leaving something behind. My man had a whole family, right? And what is really interesting to me is like what we see him go through in the story and how he kind of grapples with his identity and uh, deciding to pass and then just what that really means to him and, and, um, if there's any regret with it or and so forth because later on oh he leaves her he leaves wife and kid behind um and then later on he marries a white woman and he falls in love with a white woman marries her and then he's just riddled with fear he's so nervous that um about like what his kids are going to turn out because honestly we are we're black as in a race sure but we are so many different shades and he has no idea what his kids may come out with. Are they gonna come out with a, a textured hair or are they gonna be darker than him? Um, that does not happen, but he's, he's afraid. He's afraid of what may happen to him now that he chose this life uh, to really pretty much abandon oneself and, and come into a new self. Um, and he abandons his family and, 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 well, his previous family as well. Um, so, by the end of the book, you see that he's kind of, he loses a piece of himself, right? Cause he chose to pass and by choosing to pass, he can no longer talk to anyone he once knew. Um, he can no longer be himself or, or be that that's part of himself. Um, and it's, he's forever living a lie. So it's really interesting to me um, the story being about colorism and how he's passing. I think what's most interesting to me is like how he's grappling with, with uh, passing and his and the ramifications of it. Um, it's really kind of like not ever being able to be comfortable in your own skin. Um, and I just feel like 
that I mean that just gives me chills just now just thinking of what that would be like it's just a horrible feeling um, so very interesting read and one read that's very that's just off the charts everyone's talking about it is the vanishing half by Britt Bennett um, similar premise except that you have two sisters identical twins both black one's lighter than the other one can pass one cannot and during the stories written in the Jim Crow era and then you then have the sister kind of grappling with um, the fact that uh, you know what of colorism and choosing to pass and so forth so that's actually a book that I'll be reading this month for February for uh, a book club. So I'm interested to see the juxtaposition between the two um, because the autobiography of Next Colored Man, and by the way, it's not an actual biography. It is meant to be read as a biography and I think it's meant to be read as a biography so you can really take it in and really kind of understand what that would be like if you were in that person's situation. Um, you want to grow economically, right? And you want to gain wealth and money and so forth. And the only way you can see it, see yourself doing it, or the easiest way of doing it, is by passing. <sighs> right? <laughs> it's, it, that's wild. Um, and then what did you abandon and so forth from it? So I'm very interested to see how the two kind of compare. Um, because when I heard the premise of The Vanishing Half, and I'm sure there's many, many stories of uh, passing and so forth, but it, it really made me think back to James Weldon Johnson's an autobiography of an ex-colored man. So I'm excited to read that for the month of February and see where it really takes off. So that is James Weldon Johnson and the autobiography of an ex-colored man. Um, if you have not read it, what a pleasure you have ahead of you. I would highly suggest it. Um, even though I told you a bit of the premise, I think that it's worth the read um, to really kind of just understand what, what the main character went through and the other character too. So I mentioned his first wife was a custodian. We do see like what, we do see, see things through her lens as well. Um, and how she how she's like slowly kind of like not letting go of him but I guess the best way to say it is like he's slipping away from her um, so highly recommended and yeah happy Black History Month again y'all and thank you for tuning in